Section 59 of Poems by Currer, Ellis, and Acton Bell by Charlotte Emily and Anne Bronte. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Self-Congratulation by Anne Bronte Ellen, you were thoughtless once, of beauty or of grace, simple and homely and entire, careless of form and face. Then whence this change? And wherefore now so often smooth your hair? And wherefore deck your youthful form with such unwearied care? Tell us, and cease to tire our ears with that familiar strain. Why will you play those simple tunes so often o'er again? Indeed, dear friends, I can but say that childhood's thoughts are gone. Each year its own new feelings bring, and years move swiftly on. And for these little simple airs, I love to play them more. So much I dare not promise now to play them never more. I answered, and it was enough. Then turn them to depart. They could not read my secret thoughts, nor see my throbbing heart. I've noticed many a youthful form upon whose changeful face the inmost workings of the soul the gazer well might trace. The speaking eye, the changing lip, the ready blushing cheek, the smiling or beclouded brow, their different feelings speak. But, thank God, you might gaze on mine for hours and never know the secret changes of my soul, from joy to keenest woe. Last night, as we sat round the fire conversing merrily, we heard without approaching steps of one well known to me. There was no trembling in my voice, no blush upon my cheek, no lustrous sparkle in my eyes of hope or joy to speak. But, oh, my spirit burned within, my heart beat full and fast. He came not nigh, he went away, and then my joy was past. And yet my comrades marked it not, my voice was still the same. They saw me smile, and o'er my face no signs of sadness came. They little knew my hidden thoughts, and they will never know. The anking anguish of my heart, the bitter burning woe. End of section 59